All right, guys, welcome back to another video. We will start off here talking about Obsidian, potentially Fallout, New Vegas coming back, plus many other things we'll get into after that. But before we do, if you do enjoy daily gaming news and content, make sure to hit that subscribe, hit the like, and check out my Spotify. Link is in the description. So Obsidian CEO, as well as Josh Troyer, we're in some interviews over the last day or so, and we got some more information, kind of what we can expect going forward, the development for the Outer Worlds 2, and just how well that is coming along. The Outer Worlds took everyone by storm when it came out. A lot of people fell in love with it and loved it. And then we got the announcement for the Outer Worlds 2 a few years ago, and we've been waiting to see just more about this game. We know that Obsidian is working on multiple projects at the same time. You got Avowed, you have the Outer Worlds, you have, they worked on Pentiment, they created that, put that out as a small little side game, then they ported it over to multiple platforms. Like they are one of the studios at Xbox that I think is carrying the load a lot for Xbox with just the releases, the consistency of games like Grounded as well, where they're continuously updated. Obsidian is one of the best studios at Xbox for sure. But when it comes to the Outer Worlds 2 specifically, you have Tom Caswell, who was speaking on the Limit Break podcast, speaking to the CEO, Fergus Urquhart, asking about the Outer Worlds 2, and he said that it is going very well. Then, also talked about the teams coming together and working on multiple projects. For example, like we know Avowed is coming out in early 2025. And he had this to say, just kind of how it affected the team. He says, I've been actually really impressed. We had a really hard time at the studio in COVID and then goes on here to say, I appreciate Microsoft and the teams and everybody and that we kind of said, no, we will get there. We will get there with all of these games. Are they going to be on the timeline that we originally thought? No. And I mean, we've, we've already seen that with delays, but we're going to get there. And I think that's proven, right? Grounded turned out awesome. Pentiment turned out awesome. Avowed is going to be great. And Outer Worlds 2 is looking incredible and just from that list that he puts out there that, that i mentioned at the start of this video it's crazy the amount of games that obsidian is working on and just the success of the games that they do put out i mean you think about grounded specifically something that was just completely different from other games that they did make but has done extremely well and it is a really fun game if you like those crafting survival style of games definitely one of the better ones out there and i think that world 2 is going to be phenomenal they're definitely going to be able to improve on an already awesome game with cool areas, weapons, and characters, and then just probably make it, I'm assuming, a little bit bigger and uh, have some interesting deep storytelling and options and obviously have all of the different ways that people play through it, different endings that you get to have with the choices within the game. So if you're looking forward to The Outer Worlds 2, hopefully we will see some more about it soon. I mean, we're, we've seen tons about Avowed. We have already uh, have seen everything about Pentiment and, and Grounded, of course. Now it's the Outer Worlds 2 is one that we are waiting on for more information. But another game that I think a ton of people would love to see, and I think it's about time Xbox just green lights this because it would sell like crazy. There would be so much hype. Imagine they drop this trailer at the upcoming Xbox showcase next year or something and, and say that it is being made. And people will lose their minds, especially now as we wait for the next mainline Fallout game, and that is Fallout New Vegas. For a lot of people, it is their favorite game. It is a game that Josh Sawyer and Obsidian did work on before working on other stuff. And now it looks like everyone is on board to make this game. They just need to get Xbox and Microsoft on board to give them that green light. And Josh Sawyer was talking about this. And he says this, any project that has to do with what we are doing, what are the boundaries, what am I allowed to do and not allowed to do? I think with any IP, especially what I've worked with before, what do I want to do this time I, that I wasn't able to do last time? If those constraints are just really constraining, then it's not appealing because who wants to work on something where the one thing they want to explore is not possible? And that was a question and talking about returning to follow. So clearly if they're going to make another Fallout New Vegas. They want to make something new and different and, and be able to expand on what they accomplished with that first game. I think people would love to see a Fallout New Vegas too, but at the same time, I think a lot of people would be okay if we got like a Fallout New Vegas remake or remaster or something just to, I guess, quench that thirst for that game itself. I mean, the game is still fun to play if you go now, but from that, it sounds like he really just wants free reign creativity to be able to make something new, make a, a new 
Fallout or expand upon what they did with Fallout New Vegas 2, which I don't think anybody would object to. That would be insane if they came out and announced that they were making a brand new one. Now, in terms of the team behind New Vegas and, and the enthusiasm around that, that's obviously there. But the Fallout co-creators also did express, I believe it was last year, that they would be on board here for a potential Fallout New Vegas remaster. And I wonder if that will ever happen. I think to me, it's such an easy cash in for Xbox, Microsoft. I'm not sure why they haven't done it yet. Of course, again, Obsidian is working on so many games right now. Maybe that is the reason that once Avowed's done and and maybe Outer Worlds 2, then they can have more resources for that. Or even just when Avowed's done, maybe they'll have more resources to push towards that itself. And specifically, Leonard Boyarsky who is uh, one of the co-creators of Fallout says, not that it's up to me, but wouldn't a graphical remaster of Fallout New Vegas be awesome? And then Kane also says in an interview, it would be awesome. That's something that we we talked about, obviously, when that happened, but I think it's time. I mean, everyone wants to do Fallout New Vegas. It's time to get that greenlit. If Microsoft was smart, I mean, I'm sure they would be seeing all of the excitement and hype and, and want for this game, and they would allow it to get done when those resources are available. Again, fingers crossed, maybe when Avowed is released, this is the next thing that they are going to be jumping into and making. Now, Microsoft Rewards, we know that they've been updated recently. It's kind of gone downhill compared to where they were before all of these updates. I mean, you can still get the rewards, it's still fine. You're still getting to be able to collect stuff to redeem for your Game Pass months, as well as other prizes and things that you can get from the rewards program. But here's just something that if you're looking to get more rewards, it doesn't really directly exactly relate to Xbox, but it will be able to be used towards things like Xbox Game Pass subscriptions. It looks like Microsoft is rolling out some easy rewards to be redeemed. That is just through reading Outlook emails. It says here that, that it's been identified by an eagle-eyed Microsoft reward user in the US. And you can see this picture and you get points just by reading emails, like three emails and you're getting all of these points added in. It's the same thing as just doing like a search with Bing. All of those things do add to your overall reward. It says use Outlook.com on your mobile browser and earn a bonus of up to 1,000 reward points. Read three Outlook emails each day and earn bonus points daily, weekly, and beyond. To earn the bonus rewards points, go to your mobile device, log into Outlook.com on the mobile browser, navigate to the rewards mini app to see the full offer. As of right now, from what I understand, not everybody has access to this. They are rolling it out to people I guess over time. So eventually you will get access to it, but it is something just to keep your eye on. If you're been searching for more ways to accumulate points, to stack your Xbox game pass membership or to get whatever you like purchasing with your Xbox rewards, this is something that may be happening for you soon. Just literally reading outlook emails. Now, if you like overwatch, we're finally getting some more integration with blizzard and Xbox game pass and Xbox Overwatch 2 is getting a bunch of stuff here for Xbox Game Pass next month. It's part of those perks that come along with many games. If you go to the perks section, I feel like people forget about this, but if you go to the perks section on your Xbox, you can redeem a bunch of codes that gives you like cosmetics and some points for some games. Like if I believe MLB had some stuff in there where you could use it for their creating your ultimate team or my team, whatever it's called in MLB. All of that stuff is in the perks section of Xbox. Now, starting on September 17th, they say here you will receive an instant one-time grant of 30 Mythic Prisms to spend on Mythic Unlocks and six awesome hero skins, Cardboard, Reinhardt, Turtle Ship, Diva, Cyber Dragon Hanzo, Street Runner Genji, B Mercy, and Cleric Life Weaver. And so they're getting all those cosmetics and they say the items will be yours to keep, but you'll need to log in and ensure that your accounts are linked by October 21st to claim them. So if you're playing Overwatch 2 and you want all of this cosmetics up, make sure to log in, link your accounts, and it's a nice addition to the Xbox perks system. Okay, let's talk a little bit Square Enix here and Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 3. We obviously got Remake Part 2, about the first one in 2019. And those games, I mean, the first one was huge when they first showed it off. The hype around that was crazy. I think Part 2 just it was a great game, but it, their hype wasn't as much for it. And we, we saw that indicated by Square Enix themselves with their financial reports where they didn't really meet their expectations. And you could say that's because they didn't release the game on every single platform. I definitely think that plays a role within it. And now part three is on the way. And Unreal Engine 5 
we've seen how good that engine can be. I think we're going to see more games switching over to Unreal Engine 5 to get some amazing looking products. And it looks like part three here for Final Fantasy VII Remake may be doing that as well. It says here, spotted by ex-user Genki, Hamaguchi said that he thinks that players want most is for Square Enix to deliver the final game in good shape and as soon as possible. And he says, with that in mind, the company will weigh up whether switching to Unreal Engine 5 is likely to accelerate the development rather than sticking to unreal engine 4 i think the hope here is that yeah people want this game to be delivered they want it to be in good shape but i would think at the same time they would probably as well love to see a jump from the first two parts to part three especially since it's going to be released in a couple of years from now you're going to want to see that progression from the technology I mean, that's what, at least what I would like to see. And they could wow people. I think if they jumped over to unreal engine five. So I hope that is something they are looking at. If that, how easy that is, I don't know. Maybe there is a lot more work than they would expect to go from unreal engine four to unreal engine five, but the engine itself also from what we see here is easier to develop for it accelerates development. So there's a lot of things they could do. And I do hope that they do consider this, and even if they have to delay it a little bit, even if they have to push it out a little bit longer, I think it would be worth it to see how much better it would look and feel in Unreal Engine 5 versus Unreal Engine 4. Okay, this is pretty cool, and I like to see this happening. Uh, this is kind of... If you look at Steam and you look at Xbox, they are going kind of in that same direction, which is getting people to be able to utilize their operating system and their ecosystem on whatever device that they want to utilize it on. And now we're seeing this here with Steam OS. If you have a Steam Deck, you have Steam OS. It's a great operating system, in my opinion. It made the actual handheld feel like a very smooth working device compared to using like the Asus ROG Ally and having just native Windows on there, even with their Armor Recreate launcher. It's just not nearly as good as using Steam OS. And I would love to see a native handheld operating system implemented into like an Xbox handle. I think that would really improve the overall experience. But SteamOS does a great job and it looks like they are going to be able to or they're going to be wanting to lend that to more people to be able to use it and support rival handhelds to use SteamOS. When you actually launch Steam on a Windows device, you can boot it up and it pretty much is Steam OS, but it's just not something native that you launch into when you turn the device on. But it says here, Valve is set to allow its Steam OS to function on rival handheld devices after recent update notes mentioned support for the ROG Ally keys. Many wondered if this meant the operating system was going to come to the Asus ROG Ally and other handhelds like the Lenovo Legion Go. And according to Valve itself, that's exactly what is happening. So this is a statement given to The Verge. Valve's Lawrence Yang, says the team is working on bringing full support for other devices. They say, the note about ROG Ally Keys is related to third-party device support for SteamOS. The team is continuing to work on adding support for additional handhelds on SteamOS. And I think that's a great move. That's a smart move. That's obviously something that people are going to utilize. And it keeps gamers, no matter what device that they are using within the Steam ecosystem. And you can look at this and you can relate this to exactly to what I think Xbox is going to be doing in the future with their hardware specifically is that, yes, they'll have the official Xbox hardware that they create, the console, the handheld. But I, I do think we potentially are going to see Xbox licensing out the Xbox operating system to other companies out there that want to make devices for people who are in the Xbox ecosystem. And I think that would be very smart. So you're going to be able to just lock people into that ecosystem where all their games are and get easy access and get a nice smooth experience. And they're going to be staying there rather than going other places from the business side of things. That to me sounds like a very, very smart move. And then obviously if, if you just have a windows device, but you can launch everything on there, like Steam and, and everything, but in a nice handheld OS, it'll just make the experience better. So I think this is, when I you look at Steam, you look at Xbox, they're kind of going in that same direction. And I, I, I would compare Xbox uh, right now far more closer to Steam and how they are thinking about doing things than, like, for example, PlayStation. But I do think PlayStation is slowly moving towards that progression of getting people to play their games everywhere as uh, they're releasing games on PC 
I think they're going to be making a PC launcher. It's just a evolving video game industry that is giving more choice to gamers. And I think that's overall all a good thing. Okay, let's talk about this because Journey to the Savage Planet is a very beloved game by a lot of people. It's on Game Pass right now. I think it's been in Game Pass a few times. And it, it looks like they are getting ready to reveal a sequel, which I think will get people pretty excited. The Savage Planet game here on Twitter says, Knock, knock, who's there? Not another spam, we swear. And they post this video and it just says incoming message. And that's pretty much it. Like, And then the pop-up boxes i mean there's not really much from that but i would assume that we have gamescom coming around the corner and with gamescom gonna have a lot of eyes on it it would be the perfect time to reveal a sequel for journey to the savage planet and this will this game will get support a lot of people do enjoy the first one another game that did get an announcement for a release date here is the until dawn remake and this is launching on october 4th 2024 for the ps5 and for the windows pc again another playstation game releasing on pc day one it's a remake of super massives until dawn a narrative driven horror thriller style of game when they first announced this a lot of people scratched their heads as to why in the world are they remaking this game that already looks very very good it absolutely does not need to remake but here we are they are doing that i think that's probably just to cash in right now with not too much stuff being released in 2024 but they put out this trailer and they show the graphics comparison and i'll say yeah it looks better but it, I was, in my opinion, it confirms my suspicions that, like, it doesn't really need a remake. Yeah, it looks better. Yeah, things are shinier and the lighting is definitely better and enhanced. But the game already looked really good on the PlayStation 4. I don't see why this game needed a remake. But we'll see how it sells and we'll see what people think when they actually get it in their hands and you'll probably see comparisons of people playing it compared to the older version but here it is until dawn remake if you do want it october 4th 2024 uh, dead island 2 is getting new game plus and a horde mode which is pretty cool they say here that on october 22nd dead island 2 will get the patch 6 update which will induce new game plus and a brand new horde mode called neighborhood watch so if you're into dead island dead island 2 a game i still need to play it's been on my backlog forever i know it's in game pass just haven't gotten to it there's going to be some new modes to it and then finally the reveals for dragon age the veil guard so today if you, if you want to tune in there's going to be a release date trailer and an announcement week of august 19th high level combat and pc highlight which i'm excited to see week of august 26 companions week August 30th, developer Discord Q&A. September 3rd, IGN's first month-long exclusive coverage begins. And we were talking about this last week about Game Informer and how Game Informer was doing all the coverage for this game before it shut down. Looks like they are now switching over to IGN, giving them full coverage of the game. And then as well, some more stuff to come in September and beyond. Dragon Age, the Veilguard is a big game. And I think for a few reasons, obviously Dragon Age, it was a beloved series. A lot of people didn't like a couple of games in that series itself and it's Bioware and Bioware for a lot of hardcore fans has gone downhill over the last while. So this is one of those games that I think if they can kind of get people back on board with them, it will be huge. I mean, this is where they're going to have to prove themselves. Are Is Bioware, can they still make good games? Is this something that people are going to want to play as an RPG? How are the characters going to play? All of that type of stuff. This is why I think Dragon Age of the Veilguard is, is massive. From what we've seen so far, I mean, it looks fun. I'm actually pretty excited for this game, and I am going to be checking it out. But we're getting all of the lead up now until its official launch. But I'll end the video there, guys. If you did enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up. If you're new here, hit that subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.